For decades, it has stood tall, the great stadium by the lake. A home to legends, Sorette, Makita, Six Killer and Moon, Kaufman and Dillon, Entman and Cruz, the Hewitt brothers, Triplett and Tui Asisopo, Locker and Foster. Season after season, players etch their names into the memory of Husky Stadium. Decades of greatness laid the foundation for the future of Husky football. But that home was crumbling. The one constant needed to be rebuilt, stripped to its core, a newer, better, more comfortable home took shape on Montlake. And now, after a long wait, it's finally time. The football fortress has been fortified. A new field of glory awaits. One where Price and Thompson, Sankey, Williams, Seferi and Jenkins can make their mark playing for Coach Sark in a stadium that stands tall and proud once again on the shores of Lake Washington. It's a place where new legends of the fall will write their own pages of Husky history. A place the purple and gold can finally once again call home. And now the games begin again in the new Husky Stadium as the dogs retake Montlake. Welcome to the new Husky Stadium. The dogs are finally ready to retake Montlake. Over the next hour, we're going to show you some things that until now no camera has seen. Hello everyone, I'm Como Fours Mike Ferrari. This palace by the lake has all sorts of bells and whistles, including seating that gets you closer to the action, the audio and video technology that makes this the most state-of-the-art college stadium in the nation, the luxury suites that combine spectacular views with upscale amenities, and the new perks for the players, from the weight room to a brand new medical facility. And we'll hear from Husky greats past and present. That's where we begin with the players. You know, over the course of two years, the Huskies haven't had a home. They're finally back in Husky Stadium. I'm very excited to play in this beautiful stadium that we have. Uh, I can't wait to open up the game with Boise State. Uh, just hear all the fans screaming and cheering, go Huskies. It's going to be a great environment, great experience. I'm really excited. You know, I've been here four years. I love the tradition here, and this, that stadium is phenomenal. The workers put in long hours to do that, and uh, I'm just very grateful to be here. I'm very appreciative, and it's world class, first class. You know, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, you know, it's been a long time on the East Field, and I, I think we're ready to and excited to see what the, the new stadium has for us. We have some of the, the best fans, the most supportive fans in the country, and uh, it's just fun being home. Renovating Husky Stadium cost $261 million and took 21 months of hard work. That's a far cry from when it was originally built. 93 years ago, it took six months and cost $600,000. The original stadium dates back to 1920. The players wore leather helmets and games were played on dirt. In the following decades, there were expansions and renovations. But the stadium's bones were old and the facility became unsafe. From the practical perspective, the stadium was in dire need of some physical improvement. It was uh, becoming almost to the point of a life safety issue. That concern really hit home about six years ago. We had one catastrophic failure of one stairway that dropped in the middle of the winter, which really got our attention. So on November 5th, 2011, the dogs played their final game in the stadium as we knew it. Then came the big teardown. And the building back up. Fast forward to August 2013. The new and improved Husky Stadium will host its first game one week from tonight. Right now it's finishing touches and really what we're trying to wrap up are the little details and going around making sure those little details get completed just right. Overseeing it all is a project manager who's Husky through and through. Chris Broadgate graduated from the UW School of Construction Management. I'm building a stadium that is an icon and it will be a legacy because it's not every day that you get to wake up in the morning and go to work and you're building a stadium for a football team that you love and you've always loved, for a school that you're an, al an alumni from. And the fans share in that passion. When you see the dogs back on home turf, it just might be a game-changing experience. I really envision um, the most electric atmosphere in college football and the best setting for college football. I know it's going to be an electric atmosphere. 
Well, joining us now is someone who is so critical and important to the effort to build the new Husky Stadium, Husky AD Scott Woodward. And, and Scott, it's one thing to see the plans for a house. It's another thing to stand in it. I guess your, your initial feeling being in this place. Yeah, very pleased. It's uh, one of these things where you have blinders on and you keep your head down the whole way and you wake up and you look at it and you're really, really pleased. It's a great sense of accomplishment for everyone. So long the team had a practice on that East Field and it was just kind of a, a matter of we're going to get in there, we're going to get in there. What was the biggest, uh, I guess, was there a hurdle? Was there something that the, you had to get through construction-wise? Or was there something to maybe put some doubt in your mind that getting this thing done on time? No, it never was really that. It was just always kind of the problem du jour, you know, problem of the day. And you just get through that and you plow through it and you go to the next one. So, like I said, it was aptly described as, or I aptly described it as just keeping your head down and the blinders on and getting it through one day at a time. Was this something that had to be done and the world of collegiate athletics is, is changing so much and everybody has to be competitive in so many ways, was it just something that had to be done? Yeah, for, for two reasons. We had to be competitive uh, with our football operations office uh, behind us here, or I should say in front of us, mm -hmm. um, for recruiting and for, for efficiency standpoint. But for our fans, you know, we, we have to always be uh, concerned about losing fans to how good TV coverage is now into the leather couch, into the HD TV. So we have to give them a great experience and give them a reason to come out. This was already a noisy place to begin with, with the track. You take the track away and it's so close now. Was that a consideration? Because you knew that home field could be there and to get those stands as close as possible? Because it, it's pretty tight down there yeah. in the sidelines. There's no question about it, it was a consideration. And we think it'll be even louder. You walk in here and they're still doing stuff. I mean, this place is going to be brand spanking new when people walk in here for that opener on the 31st. Yeah, it really is. And we'll, we'll have a punch list to do even after <laughs> the game, and uh, it'll, it'll go on from there. Is there going to be a point, I know it's a little a week away or so, but when you sit there and watch that first game where, where you can maybe just sit back, relax, and be like, you know, th this is pretty cool, and I had, I had such a big part in this. Yeah, only after a victory. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I'll relax. Well, Scott, thank you for your time. Appreciate yeah. it. Job well done. Appreciate and, uh, you coming out. I'm sure the Husky fans are going to appreciate this the amazing building. Hey, when we come back, we're going to catch up with Husky head coach Steve Sarkeesian and get his impressions of his new home. I don't think that there's anywhere in the country that can rival it. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, this is a pretty good place to call home. Plus, a behind-the-scenes look at the most wired stadium in the nation. So this is the highest-tech intercollegiate college football stadium in America. And this is the control room that controls this, the 100-foot HD screen. It's all part of a high-tech look behind the scenes of the stadium, and we're going to have that for you coming right up. Welcome back to Retake Montlake. Husky head coach Steve Sarkeesian joins us now to talk about his new home. I guess, coach, anybody that goes through a home build can't wait to get into the new place. What has the past year been like for you, a year plus, to, to sit on that one field and practice and then see this new place come to fruition? It was actually pretty amazing, you know, to watch it get torn down and then to watch this beautiful building get rebuilt and then to finally now being moved in. Uh, it's been a real humbling experience, quite honestly, uh, to think that we get to be the first team and coaches to uh, to work in this stadium and to, to put our product on the field. It's been very humbling, uh, but what an exciting time to watch it all go through, watch all the hard work that everybody put into this. Uh, uh, we're all just extremely excited and humbled to be part of it. You have a lot of people that through the course of the build went down Mont Lake and they would see it being built up. They're going to come here for a few Saturdays a year. This is your office, yeah. your home. You come here every day. I, I guess how eager were you just to kind of get home again and get that good feeling. Well, it was, it's been great. You know, I think just like anything, there's a sense of comfort level once you're in a building or in your home. And, you know, anytime you move into a new place, there's always new things and uncertainties. Well, we're starting to settle in now. I think we're comfortable in it. It's a tremendous facility, a uh, state of the art. Uh, I, I don't think that there's anywhere in the country that can rival it. Uh, and, and like I said, we're, we're honored to be here. Um, we are feeling more comfortable in our home, but uh, I wish the fans could be here more often. We're going to try to make that happen in the next spring and in the next fall to open some things up more to them. But uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, this is a pretty good place to call home. 
Do you have a, have you been in here long enough to have a favorite part? Or is it just everything? <laughs> you know, my favorite part is kind of one of the more unassuming pieces to it. It's when you get on the elevator and you go down to the ground floor, which is what we refer to as the engine room for our players. And there's almost like a steel chain linked uh, backdrop of purple there. And it says, this is Husky football. And I think it really embodies all of the characteristics that this program has stood for for many, many decades of the tough, hard nosed mentality. I, I kind of enjoy that because it's the start of my day. Like, OK, this is where I'm supposed to be. Let's get to work. The tunnel is still part of the Huskies game day experience, but you're not going to share it with another team. Is that something that you used to like? Is it something you think you might miss? Well, when I was an opponent as a player, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's our tunnel, and uh, we, we cherish it. Uh, it. There's so many great memories and, and, and historical moments from, from teams and players and coaches that we want to make sure that it that's unique to us and we keep it ours. Uh, it is still something that uh, one of the key moments that I look forward to on game day, I'm getting some goosebumps right now just thinking about that first time coming out of the tunnel because it's a special place uh, in Husky football. The track is gone. I think that's probably the glaring difference when you right. walk into this place. That puts the people so much closer. Yeah. And this was already a rocking place right. for home games. I mean, have you thought about it? I mean, can you even imagine what it's going to be like trying just to communicate with some of your assistants? Well, it's going to be loud. And uh, I, I think one of the keys for us is defensively communicating. We know the crowd's going to be loud and the opponent's offense is on the field. It's our defense, the ability to communicate. So we've been working tirelessly at that to make sure that our communications are right and that we don't have those busts defensively. Hopefully our, our crowd is a very knowledgeable one, which we know they are, and great football fans can tone it down a little bit when our offense is on the field so our offense can communicate really well. Speaking of which, game number one, August 31st, you have Boise State coming in. Amazingly enough, you start the season the way you ended it against right. a, a team you faced in the Las Vegas right. Bowl. I guess, how do you get ready for them in this new place? And it, do, you, do you funnel a lot of the excitement of just being here, but also that there's the game to play against someone that, that beat you guys? Well, we know they're a good good opponent, and we know a team, they're a team that uh, is very well coached. Um, they've got talent on both sides of the football. They'll be ready to play. I, I think one of the keys for us in this game is remain focused on the task at hand, and that's the ball game. There's going to be so much hoopla, so much going on around us. Uh, what's going to be key for us is focusing on what's right in front of us, and that's preparing for Boise, executing really well, and playing a four-quarter football game because that's what it's going to take to win. All right, Coach, one final question before uh, we, we send you off to get ready for Boise right. State. There's so much new technology in this stadium, and we're this tech city uh, as we are here in Seattle. And the one big thing I've heard, I guess, is that a recruit can come to your office over there. Yep and grab a controller and, and play Xbox on the gigantic <laughs> video screen. Is that true? That is true. Um, I just warn them, don't let me beat you. You'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> Are you good at that? You play um, that I used to be good at it. Uh, I, I get to our current players and on our roster and try to get some of the secrets because all those games have little secrets. And so I might set the game up before the recruit comes in and maybe get a, a few extra bonus, bonus plays in there for me. If you need anybody to practice against, I'll come because I'm really bad. You got so it. Have you Build my time. confidence. Yeah, right? there you go. Build it up. up. Why not? Why not? <laughs> well, with all the technology, including the Xbox and Coach Sark's office, there is so many other things to look at technology-wise here in the stadium. Criminal Force Matt Markovich has more on that. Thanks, Mike. This is now the highest tech intercollegiate college football stadium in America. So what makes it so high tech? Let's take a look. There is no stadium in the country that can boast to have more than Husky Stadium. There's kind of technology around every corner. And of course, the scoreboard. A hundred feet across, 2,500 pixels, basically double the aspect ratio of your HD set at home. So that board is basically more than double the size of the old, as they call it, Husky Tron. And you could do one more cool thing with it. Coach Sark was right. It may be one of the best recruiting tools ever. From his office on the far west end of the stadium, a player, a coach, anyone can play Xbox on the big stadium screen or any of the 700 digital displays scattered throughout the stadium for that matter. How is this possible? Well, it's a technology called IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, where one person can control what happens on every screen and make each one different. And the person that's sitting at this station here controls everything seen in the stadium. You've got the banners, the sideline scores, the big screen, 
everything around the concession stands, all controlled by one person here with one touch of a button. I can control every screen. Carolyn Koch is one of those with all that power at her fingertips. Take this concession stand, for example. So you could control this individual screen we're looking at right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Right now, in the bottom left, you can see Coke. Um, but I can go ahead and play the Starbucks one. Just by clicking here, um, we have a system of triggers. I hit fire selected triggers and it will change. The Coke ad changed to Starbucks just on that one screen. Carolyn can change up menu boards depending on the concession location and it's interactive. And you can see it changes and this menu is a completely different look. It's Husky themed. Uh, across the bottom we have student images that they submitted via Twitter that rotate through. Uh, so we just wanted to make each concession fun and unique to itself. So with the Husky score a touchdown, you can basically put up their free hot dogs after every uh -huh. touchdown. Yeah, definitely. You think you'll I like do that, that plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Rolls over the middle to the end zone, touchdown! And what's displayed at the luxury boxes or on the scoreboard can be completely different in the concourses. We can now use digital displays as menu boards. We can use them to show the game. We can kind of change that up midstream if we get to an important part of the game. There's all kinds of flexibility we have there. And wherever you are, you won't miss the big play. So whenever the Huskies get in the red zone, these mm -hmm. TVs will switch to what's happening on yes. the field yes. automatically. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, it's exciting. On game day, the digital experience runs from a control room inside neighboring Heck Ed. We'll have a crew of more than 20 every game. Uh, we have a control room controlling five cameras around the stadium, two replay operators, graphics. So compared to the old Husky Stadium, Mike, this is a terrific place to watch football with some new technology. Back to you. Hey, thanks a lot, Matt. You know, a lot of that new technology is wired into the new suites here at Husky Stadium. This is considered maybe one gigantic suite where you can hang out with a bunch of your Husky friends. It's called the Touchdown Terrace, so close to the action. You can high five one of the Husky players after a score. And then there are the suites up there, which are pretty sweet, no less. 500 square feet, couches, food areas, great views, and of course, televisions. Each luxury suite has three TVs all of their own. Pretty cool. Now we can't show you those new suites yet because, well, they're not finished. Still so many parts of the stadium getting finished leading right up to game day on the 31st against Boise State. But one thing is for sure, the suites, well, they are definitely sweet. Well, something tells me that come time for the Apple Cup or some of those cold weather games in November, those suites will be pretty popular places. Still to come here as we retake Montlake, we'll visit with the brothers, Brock and Damien Heuer, the former Husky quarterbacks, offer up their initial impressions of the new Husky Stadium. I mean, who wants this when you can have geese poop on the practice field over there, really? And yeah, the old crew house with rats <laughs> running up and down the Yeah, hall the good old time. Room. And then we folded our leather helmets in our pockets. It was <laughs> awesome. And a little later, a behind the scenes look at where they turn puppies into dogs. We'll take you on a tour of the new 12,000 square foot weight room under the stands. And yes, they even have an underwater treadmill. Football is a brutal sport, we all know that, and throughout the course of the season, players end up with all sorts of aches and pains that need medical treatment. But when it comes to getting treatment, the players don't have to travel very far. You see, there's a UW Sports Medicine Clinic in this stadium. Actually, it's right below me, here in the South Stands. That's where we find Como Four's Molly Shen. Molly? Mike, this 30,000 square foot facility brings together a couple of great things. The brand new state-of-the-art Husky Stadium and the expertise of UW Medicine combining forces to create the new Sports Medicine Center. It's a sure thing in football. Hard hits will lead to sprains, strains, and overall pain. And the doctor who treats this team... We're going to take a look at the tendons that pull your wrist. ...can be your doctor, too. Kim Harmon is one of the UW physicians working out of the new Sports Medicine Center inside Husky Stadium. While the location is convenient when she needs to treat a player, her practice goes beyond college athletics. The average age of my patient is actually 49 years old, and so they're um, trying to get back to uh, running or golf 
or tennis or whatever, and, um, and something stripped them up. And so th that's what we do here is get people back to active life. The center has been in the plan since the early stages of stadium design and construction. The university saw an opportunity to match its Division I sports with its medical school. The clinic is huge, with 40 exam rooms combining a variety of disciplines, including family practice, orthopedic surgery, and rehabilitation. And we all have a little bit different um, take on um, um, uh, how we work with patients and patients care in, patient care in general. And then we have radiologists right down the hall as well. So having this multidisciplinary group coming together in this one center just makes it easy for the patients and the doctors together. The UW Medicine Sports Medicine Center opens to the public September 9th. Mike, back to you. Well, thanks a lot, Molly. We're joined now by Husky legends and brothers, Damon Heward and Brock Heward. And, and guys, I guess, welcome to the new home for the Huskies, right? Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Um, a long time coming, so incredible, just uh, daunting. I mean, it feels like this stands go up to the sky, you know, the noise is just gonna sit in here. The entire 70,000 square foot football operations building built right into the stadium. Uh, the Husky tunnel is still intact. Right. It's the Husky stadium we know and love just better. It's awesome. Brock, your initial impressions when you first saw this? You know, it still feels like Husky Stadium, yet it's a new stadium. I think if you were to take any former player out here, uh, at least of recent vintage, I don't know, the last 30 or 40 years, and they were to come out and say, yeah, this is Husky Stadium, but hold on, this, why, whoa, hold on, this is like brand new. And, 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 and I think the ability, and I know Damon and I went on a tour a few weeks back, the ability to bring the new, which is the football facility, with the old, with the cantilever stands and everything else, I think seamless, and they couldn't have done it any better. Damon, you were such a, played such a big role in, in raising a lot of the funds to get this built. Was having a first-class facility, or is it just so important these days in college football because you have to be on par with everybody else? It's the competition within the competition? Yeah, it really is. I mean, obviously, with the new Pac-12 network and with what Oregon has done facilities-wise, um, you know, we have to keep up. And, um, you know, they might have a pretty special football ops building, but I don't think they have a stadium in a setting quite like this. Um, it, um, it, it's a real tribute to our donors, to our fans, to the folks that stepped up and, and gave over $50 million to make this thing happen. Brock, your initial impressions as far as, because I know with your job with ESPN, you travel around the country, you see stadiums uh, on every, every Saturday in the fall. Where does this rate now as far as maybe some of the, the big schools and, and does it matter? Yeah, if this isn't one of the five best stadiums in college football, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. And, I, and, and beyond just my opinion, because I think people would say, well, that's biased and you're a homer and you played here. <laughs> How about the LSU folks when they came in Steve's first year? From, from LSU, from Baton Rouge, you saw Baton Rouge a year ago, and they came into the old stadium with the rust and the broken down stuff and the rebar sticking out of the rows, and, and they said, that, wow, this is, this is remarkable. Last thing, uh, as far as the stadium goes, we asked, Coach Sarkeesian about it, his favorite part. He said he loves getting on the elevator and going down. And just that feeling you get off the elevator, it says Husky football, he's ready to roll. Your, your first thing that, that each of you like, I, I guess it stands out. I mean, I, I guess honestly for me, it, it was just walking out of that Husky tunnel. And you know, they dropped this field five feet, obviously they removed the track, and it just feels so intimate. And so, I mean, intimidating if you're an opponent and you come out here, I mean, it honestly feels like these things go up to the sky and I just I can't wait for August 31st when this place is packed and to see the look on our fans when they come in here I mean only a few people have really seen this thing to date so it, it's just going to be incredible on that Saturday and uh, Boise State coming to town and just that feeling and seeing everybody's look on their face when they come into this thing but for me it was walking around this tunnel and just saying are you kidding me this place is unreal yeah I think it's the same I think it's a cantilever the roofs it feels like a new stadium. I think most of the people that will sit here, and there was a lot of talk about the students moving from that section to there. Those, those are great seats. Right. Those are unbelievable <laughs> seats. But to walk out of the tunnel and to see that the bones are still here, what everybody remembers. Well, we have mentioned the tunnel quite a bit. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to look at the Husky tunnel tradition and show you how things are going to be a little different on game day. There's no place like playing at home. We love it here, the fans love it here, we love our fans, it's just, when we play here, it's, it's a great day. And you'll hear from players about their season away from home and their big transition back to Husky Stadium to finish out their college careers.
Well, welcome back to Retake Montlake, and we're here in the iconic Husky Tunnel. And Damon, for the first time, the tunnel has a name? It does, absolutely. Some of our uh, biggest donors, Joe and Kathy Ryan, stepped up in a big way, and this tunnel will forever have a name now, the Ryan Family Tunnel. And Joe played here in the 60s and is a big supporter, obviously, of Husky Athletics, and uh, pretty cool to step up and help build this new stadium, and he's a big reason why. You hear the rumbling. <laughs> I mean, is this place going to be loud before a game or what? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I tested out the barking. Yeah. It's not good enough for TV for you, but I right. tested it out beforehand. <laughs> It'll be just fine. Now, I think this is a little different, Damon, right? Because this is just the Husky. It is, yeah. It's not going to be the That's opponents, true. right? That's true. That's kind of one setback now. The locker room, the visiting locker room is kind of there in the uh, southeast uh, corner. But, you know, the way I look at it is they're not worthy to come out this locker room. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was a little intimidating. We'd do a little chant and get after them. But uh, they, they, they don't belong in this tunnel. We'll keep them over there. Do you think that will be a little intensity missing? They, uh, because it was the, that little bit of the battle before the game that happened in that tight space you know with the two teams? Well, you know what's funny is I can still remember being real young and coming to games. And I, I couldn't have been much older than Sam, Damon's boy, in, in mm -hmm. fifth, sixth grade, when Billy Joe and all that was here. And I remember standing in that tunnel and looking at the USC guys, <laughs> right? And, and just how they planned it out. They sandwiched them in there. And there was some of that talking and some of that barking. But no, I think when those players run out of whatever tunnel they're going to be in, uh, they'll be plenty intimidated. Well, it's this great Husky tradition. And I know they show it on the big board. The guys is getting ready and gets the crowd all, all fired up. There's nothing in pro football. Damon, you played 12 years. There's just there's just nothing quite like that. And I don't know if it's because it's all, it's everybody, right? You go on the road, there's 65. You're at home, it is everybody that practices, all the walk-ons, you're all in there together. And there's just nothing like that in pro football. No, there's not. You know, when that siren goes off and the purple smoke here now, and it's just, um, it's a, it's a special feeling. It's a time that players unite and, and come together and the 70,000 faithful are on their feet making their noise. And it's just, it's time to go to war, time to kick, kick, kick it off. And then the first one, uh, the, the first time the guys, will, there'll yeah. be something special about the very first time this team comes out on that Saturday night. Yeah. And, and you know, the other special thing is, is I can remember my first start in the stadium in 93 against Stanford and Bill Walsh and Don James had just um, stepped down in Lambeau's first game. and. And I can remember after the win, it was, and it was a big win. We played really well, and the offense put up a bunch of points. I and mean, I just remember walking up that tunnel thinking, like, I belong. You know, this, yeah, I can do it on this stage, on this field, in this arena. And just that feeling of walking up that tunnel victorious. I mean, that's pretty special, too. So it is it's kind awesome. of a bummer that it's no longer like droops, you know, right, with yeah. the rebar sticking out and <laughs> crazy, you know. It is, uh, like I said earlier, it's like a brand new stadium and everything that we remember and love about the old Husky Stadium. And I like what you said. You go up there, you know, only Huskies deserve to go down that tunnel. That's not it. The other teams that's no it. Longer. They're not worthy, in my opinion. Well, there's lots of <laughs> traditions that we'll finally get to get back into gear because we're here on Mont Lake again. And one of them, the Husky Navy. Have you guys ever taken a boat to a game? Only with cars? You know, I did one time. Oh, yeah? uh, the one year after I graduated, Brock was playing, and I was out of football in 96, and I took a boat over to the game, and that was pretty cool. Well, let's take a look at the Husky Navy and one family that is so glad to be pulling into Montlake on a boat. It's one of the most unique ways to travel to a college football game in America. I'm not sure, but I don't know if there's any other place like Lake Washington where the stadium is right on the lake, and nothing's the same as this. When the Huskies play at home, the Husky Navy patrols the waters of Lake Washington. You know, we've done this for so many years, like 45 years. And so um, we bring families. We have generations of families that come. But for the past year, the Navy has been stuck at the dock. Temporary breaks were put on what has become a tradition for some families, including the miles of Mercer Island. A 92-foot, three-level big dog is their usual ride to Husky Stadium on game day, something they couldn't do last year with the new Husky Stadium under construction. It was different. I, it's pretty easy for me. I can walk out my door and get on the boat and go to the games, and it was, the logistics were kind of a nightmare. The Husky Navy really only has one home port, one where dog fans can't wait to anchor once again. Big dog! and hear the band at the dock. It's just a special place. We've traveled with the team. We've traveled to a lot of uh, 
um, games that we've played out of state, and there's not a stadium like it, so it's very special, and I, you can't take it for granted. It's just, it's wonderful. For many of the Husky football players, the past three years has been quite the journey. They had the final season in the old Husky Stadium, then it was down to CenturyLink Field to try to make that place feel as much like home as they could. And then it's back now to the new Husky Stadium here on Montlake. Como Force Tim Lewis has more on the dogs who finally made it home. Can you imagine moving into a new home year after year? It wouldn't be very fun, would it? But that's exactly what the Huskies upperclassmen have dealt with over the last three seasons. Bishop Sankey remembers old Husky Stadium fondly. That's where he scored his first career touchdown. I only played in it one year, but there was a lot of great memories in that stadium my freshman year, and uh, you know, took a, took a year off from it, and now we're coming back, and you know, I couldn't be more excited. It's not like the year away from Montlake went poorly, though. The Huskies were proud to call CenturyLink Field home. It was awesome for us because it didn't matter where we played at. Uh, we still had uh, loyal fans who were there who was, Sounds to the uh, top of their lungs for us. That support led to an unbeaten home record last year at the Clink, including wins over nationally ranked Stanford and Oregon State. Just knowing that you was, you went undefeated at somewhere that isn't your home, and now being being back at home, uh, it's kind of like, oh, we could even be better. Now it's time to transition back to campus in this new building. There's nowhere else the dogs would rather be. It's no place like playing at home. We love it here, the fans love it here, we love our fans, it's just, when we play here, it's, it's a great day. The Huskies know this road all too well. It's the street that takes them from campus towards CenturyLink Field. But they don't need that path anymore because this will be their home for years to come. Mike? When students start streaming into the new stadium, this four foot high, 360 pound bronze Husky dog will be there to greet them. It guards the area just outside the student section. This is the same statue that for years sat at the southwest side of Heck Ed. The artist who made it back in 1995 is a former Husky and the same woman who made the Pike Place Market pick. When we come back, we'll visit with legendary Husky head coach Don James and we'll get his perspective on the noise here at Husky Stadium. And we'll also show you how the new Husky Stadium rebuild went green. That when Retake Montlake returns. When you first walk into the new Husky Stadium, you will notice a lot of differences. You almost need to sit down in your seat and take them all in. But the one glaring difference you'll notice right away, no track. The seats are so much closer. That means this place is going to be that much louder. You know, legendary Husky head coach Don James helped get that whole noise revolution going here on Montlake, and he can't wait to hear the noise again. Hall of Fame coach Don James patrolled the Washington sidelines for 18 seasons. His early years on Montlake didn't provide that same home field advantage he'd enjoy later on in his career. Well, the old rules were the referee would stop you if you made too much noise. If, if your team or either team was on the goal line, you know, they'd, they'd stop and then talk to the quarterback and get the fans to quiet down. Then the rule finally changed. They said, to heck with it. Defense! Once he could bring the noise, the coach made his case to Husky alums. I came back and talked to our, our alums and the press printer. We need the noise. We need, we need to make Husky Stadium a tough place to play. We, the fans really got caught up in that. And they really liked it. And, and, and if, if they're not going to let you hear your cadence, your checkoffs on the road, and they deserve not to hear them at your place. And it rocked. Husky Stadium shook opponents to their core. Good complete to Larry Michael. The Huskies lead it 25-24. While it proved to be a formidable force in the college football landscape, Husky Stadium still had the potential to be better. I've always felt like Husky Stadium was a great stadium on the lake, by Rainier, but it was not fan friendly. Our fans were so far away from the game. And if you sat in the end zone, and the, and the play was at the other. I don't know how they could ever see what's going on. I couldn't see it. I was on the sideline. The track around the stadium remained a barrier to the fans for decades. 
You know, I'm, I've always for track. I've, I like track, and I've the kids that ran it. And uh, but I, I, I just felt like it would really be a better football stadium if we could get the track out, lower the field, and get the fans closer. It, it took a lot of years to do it, but we, we've got it done now. The new Husky Stadium puts fans closer to the action and gives players and coaches a state-of-the-art facility where they can practice and play. I think it's a, a better football stadium now, more fan-friendly. We're closer. We've lowered the field, taken the track out. But uh, I, I think Sark will be fired. Plus, he's got new offices. He's got new lockers. Uh, they're in the end zone. Uh, I was when I got there in '75. We had a little classroom. That was our meeting room in the Grays building. And then we got the tunnel, and we got that. You know, Mike Lude built that. that that's north side cantilever. Then, then we got a beautiful place to to meet with her, and we thought we had died going to heaven. Now they got an indoor facility, and so I, you know, things have changed. And the Don James Center will still be a big part of Husky Stadium, that as well was renovated. One pretty cool thing you also notice about the new Husky Stadium, the field. It took a crew of 10 people 30 days to sew together 90,000 feet of field turf, and this stuff is amazing. And that paint from the field that you used to see on a player's jersey during a game, no more. The end zones and logos are all woven into the field. The new turf is on top of 280 tons of sand and 137 tons of recycled rubber. Recycling was a big part of this stadium build. Como Force John Humbert has that story. What's old is new again at Husky Stadium. You may not be able to see it all, but a new look doesn't mean old traditions and familiar feelings are torn away from fans. This is in their fabric, that's what they believe. And Chip Lightham works so with the we, athletic we department and has spearheaded some of the green efforts with the redesigned stadium. They're subtle, but will be fun to search for on game day. High tech, but low tech all at once. Take each entrance, for example, new LED lighting surrounds each W logo, and there's also new look wood paneling. There's natural materials, wood, stone, it blends well with the environment. Karen Babler took us for a tour and said that many of the new aesthetics have a local touch. Much of these materials come from Washington and Oregon. UW wanted to go local every chance it could get. Consciously, we wanted it to fit in with the woods and the trees and the lake and the environment here and have that same natural feel. Concession stands will have fully recyclable and compostable materials too. The recycling efforts extend off campus too. This used to be the turf at the old Husky Stadium. It had to be ripped out and moved over to Montlake Playfield. You can actually see the old faded Pac-12 logo here on the 25 yard line. UW shared the turf in order to give the nearby play field a quality upgrade from grass. It's an all weather year round change for the play field and a little bit of Husky history right around the corner. Natural material is important, but there's also an environmental footprint to think about. UW says it diverted 95% of construction debris away from landfills and actually reused much of it as backfill for the lowered seats. The new stands sit on top of old pulverized concrete. So the old stadium still lives on in the new stadium. And there's one other very subtle hidden piece of Husky history. These beams behind the giant W's outside are actually repainted benches. Flipped on their side, they form a backdrop for the grand new entrance. Benches used to sit on are now uh, living on in the, in the stadium. So along with old traditions, old parts of Husky Stadium don't have to fade away either. It's been a priority from the beginning. It's a priority for the community and our university. Because history can be preserved if you know where to look. Thanks a lot, John. So cool to see some of the old parts of the old Husky Stadium here in the new one. When we come back, we're going to take a look at how the Huskies are going to get stronger and faster. Everything that we want to use is right here at a back door now. Husky strength coach Ivan Lewis gives us a tour of the new 12,000 square foot weight room. That's just steps away from the field. Plus, a new seat for the voice of the Huskies. Well, it's a heck of a view from up here. It always has been, but uh, perhaps even, even better now. Bob Rondo shows us his new home at Husky Stadium when Retake Montlake continues. Along with the new field, tunnel, and locker rooms, and all that 261 million bucks can buy you, the Huskies have a new weight room. It's where Husky strength coach Ivan Lewis turns puppies into dogs. 
You know, I, I think it's pretty cool because it's all football. It's football only. Uh, we've been able to put everything in the weight room that's just for football. So instead of kind of worrying about the other sports, right now we can really focus on everything that we're putting in there. And uh, it, it really makes us unique because uh, it, it, everything that we want to use is right here at a back door now. It's 12,000 square feet full of iron and metal. Located below the seats in the west end zone, the new Husky weight room is where the dogs come to get stronger and faster. It's only a short sprint away from the field. The great thing about this is that the field now is so close to us that you know we could use our whole weight room for weight room equipment and have this whole field for our running, our jumping, all that kind of stuff that we do in our off season and summer program. So it's right here and really you know, at, at our use. And, and the great thing about it is we didn't have to waste space in the weight room to put turf down or a track or whatever because we're just right here. I mean, we're 20 yards away from our weight room and we have our whole football field that we play on, which I think is unique too because we get to train where we play. This is one room the Husky football team uses year round and it was built specifically for them. Along with all the strength training equipment, it comes complete with an underwater treadmill, a hot tub, and a cold tub. The great part about it was that we could really take my, with my staff is get, you know, what we thought was the best equipment in there and the best layout and the best setup that really fits our team and fit the program that we do. There are so many parts of this new Husky Stadium that really stand out, including on the east end facing Lake Washington. It's that, a 25-foot tall W. It's kind of like a lighthouse facing the lake. Actually, you could probably see this thing from the Palouse. Well, for 31 seasons, Bob Ronda was in the press box high above Husky Stadium. We're still pretty high in the new stadium. Bob, you had season 32 at CenturyLink last year. This is going to be your 33rd season, and you got new digs. A little scary, but uh, we finally got the house. We've been thinking about this for a long time, and uh, finally going to open here. It, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, Mike. Your initial impressions, I guess, when you see the box redone and, and where you'll be spending a lot of time for these games? Well, it's a heck of a view from up here. It always has been, but uh, perhaps even even better now. Uh, it, it, for all the world, looks to be a, a brand new stadium. It has changed so much. Uh, and especially you look down to the horseshoe, the west end of the stadium with the, uh, the coaches offices that, uh, you know, is, is absolutely spectacular. And then uh, closer to the field, the horseshoe's always been a, a tough place for a visiting team to go into. And it's going to be even harder now with the field pulled that much closer to the end zone. But uh, what a spectacular view. And then, as always, looking up on campus and, and out to Lake Washington, it, it doesn't get any better than this. I think one thing that always stands out, the times have been coming back and forth uh, over here is the track is gone. I keep expecting to see the track. Is that just an adjustment in, in general to, to not see a track down there? Yeah, it, uh, it, it takes a minute and, and you do kind of a, a double take, but there were some good times on, on the Husky track uh, in that program over the years, but uh, good riddance too. It, it's good to see it gone, that, that kind of pink circle around uh, around, and then the big tarmac leading up to the horseshoe. It's, it's nice to see all that out of here. It, it gives the stadium a much more intimate look and a much more intimate feel. So we're, we're going to play a game uh, on August 31st, a week from now. Um, do you practice touchdown Washington? Is that like when the football season's not going? Because I, I look forward to hearing that all the time. But is it, are you ever driving along? No, that's is that just meant for games? that's totally spontaneous. <laughs> you know, and what an original signature that is. You know, Washington scores a touchdown. <laughs> Bob says touchdown Washington. Oh, no, yes. you don't have to practice that a whole lot. And uh, a lot of times uh, the inflection or whatever in the call is is relative to what's happening in the play. But uh, I hope I get a chance to practice it uh, a, a week from today. A lot. We hopefully hear that a lot against Boise State. And uh, that'll be the first time we see the Huskies in action one week from now, uh, playing the same team they played in the Las Vegas Bowl last December. Como Force Tim Lewis has a preview of next week's game. It's not often a college football team gets a chance at redemption the very first week of the season, but that's exactly what the Huskies get as the Broncos roll into town on Saturday. Double move. His throw, maybe. The date, December 22nd, 2012. The location, the Las Vegas Bowl. Uh, no signal down at the one-yard line. The outcome, a 28-26 Huskies loss at the hands of Boise State demise that left a nasty taste in the dog's mouth. We kept that all through spring and through summer and guys really took that to heart and uh, I feel like after camp we will be ready and uh, the coach is doing a good job preparing us and we're doing a good job coming together as a team and a family. A new season means new opportunities but it all starts with the same opponent, 
those pesky Broncos. Yeah, we're excited. We're preparing for Boise. We know they're a great team, you know, disciplined, well coached, and you know, it's, it's for us to, you know, embrace the challenge that lies ahead of us. Boise State heads to Seattle nationally ranked. They're 19th in the country in the preseason coaches poll. UW doesn't carry the same hype, but they do know they're better than last season. That wasn't the team that we, we, we are, and uh, we're ready to show that this year. Uh, we were just inconsistent, and uh, you know, we're here to, to show them who, we, who the Huskies really are. And of course, home field advantage at the new stadium won't hurt the dog's cause either. Last year, we had kind of up and downs with the team. Now they're coming to our house, but we get all the energy and they're going to feel the wrath. Of course, the best seats in the house are going to be right here at the stadium. But if you can't make it, you can watch the game live on the new Fox Sports 1 channel, or you can listen to the game on the radio with Bob Rondo. Mike? Thanks a lot, Tim. We'll be right back. This is truly one of the most unique atmospheres for college football in all of America. One that Husky fans will no doubt appreciate even more because they couldn't come to games here on Mont Lake last season. Now, after thousands of hours of work and millions of dollars spent, it's finally time to play football again here at the new Husky Stadium. It's time for the dogs to retake Mont Lake. Enjoy the season. Go dogs.